going to be talking about exploratory data analysis, or EDA for short, in R. Exploratory data analysis is an approach to exploring data that can help you obtain basic but essential insights before performing more complex operations. Although the techniques employed by EDA are relatively simple, EDA is a critical component of any statistical analysis, and if you've done any such analyses in the past, you've likely used some techniques from EDA. For today, I'm going to be using a Kaggle, streaming, uh, Kaggle movie streaming data set to illustrate some of the techniques used in exploratory data analysis. If you'd like to follow along, you're going to need R and also a, an environment of your choice. I prefer Jupyter Notebook. And we're also going to be using a collection of packages known as Tidyverse and, of course, the uh, data set from Kaggle. So the first step is to install, install Tidyverse. Tidyverse is a collection of packages, uh, and you can see the eight packages included here. And each package brings unique tools to R. Now, once we have Tidyverse installed, we're going to want to get our data. As you can see, I've saved the Kaggle Movie Streaming dataset onto my computer as a CSV. And so we're going to read that into R as a data frame. If we look at this data frame, we can see that uh, it includes 17 columns uh, with data about the movie's title, the year it was produced, and some ratings, along with four columns indicating whether the movie is on these streaming sites. And it also has a bunch of qualitative data, like what genre the movie is and uh, who the director was. Now, before we do anything, we want to clean our data. If you look at this data frame, you can see that there's essentially a, a, a useless column, which is an ID column. And so we're going to start by removing that. This operator right here is from Tidyverse, and it's from a package called dplyr. Now, once we remove that column, and if you want, you can remove any other columns that you're not going to use, we also want to remove rows that contain null values. And in order to do this, we're just going to have the data frame exclude all cases that aren't complete, essentially. Now, once our data is cleaned, we want to look at some summary statistics. Summary statistics show us the uh, basic quartiles of each column, and they also give us a sense for the structure of our data. Uh, another important use for summary statistics is that we can see if there's any unusual values in our data. For example, if we look at runtime, we can see that the max runtime was 1,256 minutes, or about 21 hours. And that seems pretty unreasonable to me. So I looked into it and found that this was, in fact, an error. The movie that has this runtime actually only ran for about 57 minutes. And so summary statistics are a great way to see if you have outliers and if any of those outliers are just errors in, in your data. Now, once we look at some, after we look at summary statistics, we can look at some tables. Um, one question that came up for me was which genres are the most popular uh, among movies and specifically which genres are most popular on Netflix. So if we look at the overall data set, we can group the data by genre and get a tally and arrange that tally uh, in descending order. And that tells us that drama was the most popular or the most common genre of, of this data set, followed by documentary and then comedy. Now, if we add a filter for when the Netflix column is a one, that tells us that comedy is the most popular genre on Netflix, followed by drama, drama followed by documentaries. <clears throat> now, once we are satisfied with uh, our initial exploration of the data, we can ask some more interesting questions. Uh, for example, are IMDb ratings related to Rotten Tomatoes ratings? So IMDb ratings are taken from critics, or sorry, from audiences, while Rotten Tomatoes ratings are taken from critics. And so it'd be natural to expect that there's some relationship there. But the extent of that is something that we can explore in R. So first off, I wanted to look at this graphically by bringing up histograms of IMDb scores and Rotten Tomatoes scores. Now, right away, the histogram for Rotten Tomatoes scores uh, tells me that something's wrong. The fact that there's so many values at zero tells me that there's probably a lot of missing data here. And that's exactly the case. If we exclude all rows in which the Rotten Tomatoes uh, rating is empty 
and then create a new data frame called tomatoes, which um, basically is this data set, new data set, and look at a histogram of that data set, we can see that the data looks a lot better now. Still not as nice as the IMDB histogram appeared, but at least it's a, a lot better. Now we can finally look at a correlation between the two. Um, we can use ggplot, which is one of the packages from Tidyverse, to create this scatter plot of IMDb scores against Rotten Tomatoes scores. And we can also pull up a correlation between the two. And from the plot and from the correlation of about 0 0.38, we can see that they are indeed moderately correlated. Uh, but this is actually kind of surprising to me because it, it tells us that critics and audiences do disagree quite often. Another question we could ask is, are movies on Netflix above average? And so here I'm going to use IMDb scores um, to judge the quality of movies. Now, if we look at some summary statistics first, we can pull up the uh, average year of release and the average IMDb scores um, of these movies that are on Netflix. And we can also look at the same data for movies that aren't on Netflix. Um, and as we can see from these, these tables, the median and mean year um, of Netflix movies is more recent than movies not on Netflix. So, so the movies on Netflix are, are more recent. And additionally, the ratings are slightly higher. If we look at side-by-side -side box plots, we see this same relationship. Here we're using ggplot again, but this time we're uh, getting some box plots. And we're grouping by Netflix, uh, and the y-axis is the IMDb scores. So here you can see again that Netflix does that movies on Netflix do have slightly higher uh, IMDb scores than movies not on Netflix. Uh, but of course, uh, then the question now is whether or not this is a significant difference. And to assess that, we can use a two-sample t-test. And so essentially this two-sample t-test te tells us the probability that this observed difference in means uh, occur randomly, and that's what the p-value is. So this p-value is incredibly small, which tells us that uh, there's a very, it's very unlikely, essentially, that, that this difference is not significant. Um, and so we see that, indeed, movies on Netflix are most likely higher rated than movies that aren't on Netflix. Um, now, this isn't particularly surprising, and there's definitely a lot more interesting questions you could ask. For example, maybe you want to know which streaming site has the highest rated movies on average, or which movie genres have higher ratings, or maybe even how movie genres have changed over time. Um, and you can use the techniques I've shown here to answer each one of these questions and more. Um, so I hope you've uh, learned something, and I hope you continue playing around with, with the data on your own.